kids and welcome to the Stylish Rumble tutorial for rigging in the harmonies thing. Today's episode is going to be all about this arm. We're finally going to rig a thing. Oh my god. <laughs> now I've already set it up a little bit because actually doing this part is pretty boring and for the most part you should be able to guess to get as far as this stage. You bring in your clean art and you paste everything into your template that you've set up beforehand. Hopefully you don't have to write out every single one of these nodes every single time because it's just a why do people do that? But anywho, we've got all our stuff. We've got a little cuff on this hand because I don't want to bother with the wrist. I'm lazy. We've got our hand, lower arm, sleeve, and upper arm. Right now our lower arm is empty because we're going to talk about this elbow joint. I left it alone for now. I do have the pivot points in a pretty decent setup so far except for this one. But remember use your circle tool, move your pivot point around, you can pop it down wherever you need it to be. Let's talk about the hand for a second first. Oftentimes hands come in separately like three episodes in and everybody's looking at you and freaking out because you haven't given them any hands on the rigs but your rigs aren't done you don't have any hands because the design's got way too much stuff to do and nobody wants to do the hand charts so they usually come in around episode three then you have to shove them onto the rigs and you'll get something you'll get something like this where you have all your hands laid out in a row and if you have happy friendly designers you'll actually have them all exposed on your timeline and what we're going to do is go up here to our select and then the bottom one here reposition all drawings we can use this guy to position our hands where we need it to go and now all of our drawing substitutions are going to line up with that hand now with reposition all drawings it will only move the ones that are exposed on your timeline so if you don't have them laid out conveniently like this you do have to go through the trouble and make sure that they're all exposed if there's something you don't want to move you can just leave that unexposed and it won't move that one if that's something you need but we want all our hands to line up so that they share a nice pivot point and I'm just going to replace this other hand like that so if you already have a rig and this is all complexly set up already you can easily slip the new hand in like that and because we're using peg pivots it'll be set up and work exactly like you hope it would now here even though we have a cuff that's hiding our wrist you can see that we've got square hands and it's going to be up to you as the rigger to solve that problem go down to our hand drawing and you might just need to round out your your edges like this and you have to go through every single hand and make sure that's working now if you have a connected wrist that's obviously going to be a little bit more complex but you treat it similarly to the way we're going to treat the elbow so I'm going to just talk about one of them instead of both of them but you do need to go through every single one of these hands and make sure it's working properly it may seem really tedious to do that for I mean I've seen some shows that have 60 or 70 hands and it might take you two or three hours to do but the time it takes you you to set up those hands is a lot smaller than all the animators are going to spend fixing them in every single animated scene so it's like two hours per rig for you but it might end up being five hours per episode per animator if it's not fixed initially and also if you're using say this is like male generic male hands you can set it up so that you have your nice uh, knobbly bit here and you can save it in your template library just make sure that, sure that there's no strange drawing palettes that are left on it and I'll go over that in a future episode the palettes in harmony are just not they're special they're special so go through every single hand and make sure that it's lining up with its wrist properly fix all these like knobbly bits to whatever you need it to be and then save it out in your template library if you're going to use it again most shows will have maybe one or two sets of male hands one or two sets of female hands and then maybe a special so if you have someone that has really fancy fingernails they'll need a special hand set or some like a wicked evil witch character with like knobbly fingers and stuff that'd have a special hand chart but oftentimes it's reused it's good to know how to fit them into your rig now our hands working boopy doopy doop we'll pretend we fixed all our wrists because we're diligent like I said usually that's done at the end of the rig but I figured I'd throw it in here since I have a hand so you get your character in you've got all your stuff laid out in your things the next thing you want to know is how we're going to get it to move together so our first question is going to be how do we want this sleeve and this arm working together do we want the sleeve to move the arm let's try that here we go so now the sleeve moves the arm but if I move the arm this way, then the sleeve, we can't affect it with gravity. So I don't like that. So maybe instead we could try moving it with the arm itself. So that looks okay. And then if we move our arm up here, we can 
move our thing down there. But if we try and do some foreshortening on our upper arm, then we're going to have a problem. And so the solution to this is usually to add an extra peg here. And we want to open up our options box. And down at the bottom, we'll copy and paste this pivot information like this which is very tedious because there's no button to do so. And now it's going to share an identical pivot point with that. As we're assuming that we have a shoulder set up and we don't want to muck around with that too much. Now we've got our upper arm moves like this. Our arm itself can move and then the sleeve can move independently. So that's fabulous. Next, we're going to talk about this elbow joint. What I'm going to do is just hook it up like this. And I'm going to take this to be part of the arm. And I'm going to use my cutter tool. If I go up here to my select, it's the second one in the row cutter. Also, Alt-T will give you the cutter. And if you hold the Alt button down, you can get this square selection box. And we're just going to cut a piece of that out and paste it into our lower arm. Now our arm moves like this and our lower arm needs a pivot point like this. And you can see that we are, of course, getting the South Park Canadian mouth like we want to fix this. I'm going to show you right now my favorite way to set this up. I'm going to turn on my light table. So I just right click light table or shift L and now you, it'll ghost out everything around it except the thing that you have selected. I'm just going to draw a little dot where I think the center is and then I'm going to get my ellipse tool so under the lines ellipse and if you were following along previous you may have set a hotkey up for this already and we can just extend our circle out like that. Our line weight is wrong so I'm going to my tool properties three and now you can see this isn't lining up with our current lines that we have already. So what I'm going to do is select our dot and the circle and I'm going to move them over and see if I can't get it to be lined up perfectly there. Let's be a little bigger and that looks pretty good. And then we're going to fix our pivot point and make sure it's right in the center of that circle. If you select the circle using the select tool itself, it'll give you a dot and I can see that my center of my circle is right in the middle of the dot. So my pivot point should be right on and when I bend it, the curves should line up perfectly. Now, this is for your basic curve arm. For most television shows, you get arms that look like this, where it has a little bit of a curved elbow. If you want to have a show that has an elbow more like this, with more of a pointy elbow or something super stylized, then that's going to be a little bit more of a difficult treatment. And we can talk about that in the future. For now, we're just working with this super simple roundy elbow. And because this is a flat image, anything moving around this pivot point is going to move in a concentric circle. So we can just build all these circles out from the central point. And I'm holding Alt Shift to create circles from the center. You're, usually your circles are created this way. Alt Shift together will let you make one from the center. So here, if I rotate this around, you can see my circles aren't straying too far. They weren't exact, made perfectly from the center of the circle. But using this property, we can do some paper doll cheats to make sure that our, our joints are pretty clean. So I'm going to get rid of this dot now. You can keep them on there if you are worried about offsetting your pivot points during your rigging process. But you definitely have to make sure that they're gone before you ship the rig out to another department or before it gets sent to get approved because you don't want to get it sent back with dots and you definitely don't want it to get into animation and then have animators getting called on 400 scenes of an episode because there's dots on the elbows. Now that we have this elbow working cheaply, I'm just going to connect it to my hand and cuff. And I again, I want to be able to foreshorten this limb without stretching or skewing my hand because if I connect them both like this then they're all going to get smushed together so if I want to do an arm that's something more like this where the hand is coming forward um, and the shoulders way back then we're going to want to shrink this arm down pop on a new lower arm peg just by control p and you can just control P all the way up and it'll just keep adding pegs. Pop that in here, holding Alt, and then collect my hand and my cuff. And of course we have to copy and paste the pivot. Now there are some scripts out there where that you can copy and paste using a script that you can import, but because I've been doing effects for the last few years, it's not really a high priority on my list <laughs> to get. So if you are gonna be rigging a whole bunch of stuff, it's worth your time to try and find that script. So our last little question is, do we want this hand and cuff to move together or do we want them to move separately? Now, if I'm bending this, I'm not going to want to bend my cuff in the same way. But if I am doing that for shortened pose, something like this, then I may want to move them both together like that. 
but personally I feel like that's sort of a very specific instance. Most of the time we're going to the hand to move it by itself and then we're going to want to be able to just adjust the cuff to make sure that that wrist looks a little cleaner. So I'm going to keep them separate. I'm not going to add an extra hand peg in here. You can and it's not wrong by any means. It's like I said before, rigging is just problem solving. So maybe I'll put it in there and then the animators will be like, oh, there's too many pegs. Or maybe I won't put it in there and the animators will say, oh, there's not enough pegs and there's not winning. So just do what feels right to you. And now the last thing I want to do is clean up this elbow because it's still looking pretty hideous. Right now the lower arm is in the front. And the simplest solution is just to take this circle, cut it, and put it in the back here with the upper arm. I can use my cutter tool again, which remember is Alt T. And if I just select here, it's going to go until it gets resistance. And in this case, this color art of the skin tone is just going to be able to shear it off there. And you may need to go in here with your pencil editor tool, which is Alt W. And you may need to just squeaky tidy up that little thing if there's a gap and clean up your color art. Now you can refill this if you want, but um, I'm just going to quickly do that. And we'll flatten this out because you can see we're getting a little bit of an issue. And now because that circle is in the back, if we bend the arm like this, it's going to give us a nice roundy elbow that looks pretty clean. And then if we want to taper, we can add a drawing substitution, Alt Shift D, add in a few points and just clean this stuff up. And now we have a tapered line if that's something that we need. Depending on your animation supervisor or the style of the show, you may be able to get away with just this square edge. But it's easy enough to add in tapers if that's something that you guys need. Now where this falls apart is if we're doing a character rotation. So our first pose of the character we'll say is going to be this three quarter front like that. Doopy doop. So this elbow we're going to want the lower arm here to be in the front such as we have. And then we'll turn it to the side. And again I'm still going to want that lower arm to be in the front. Because most of the stuff that this character is going to be doing, like walk cycles and stuff, then the lower arm is going to be in front of the upper arm. But then if we do a back pose like this and our arm gets all the way around, we're going to want our lower arm to be behind our upper arm. If we rig a 360 rotation like this, we're going to need to use the z-axis to achieve this effect. So I'm going to use my coordinates control points tab, point zero 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 one back. Boop. And that's just going to push this guy in the back. And now our nub is in the front again. So what I like to do here is I take the circle uh, before I chop off the end, which I've now shagged myself up. I have to create a new circle and try and match it. Okay, so I've recreated my circle. I'm going to cut that and I'm going to paste it onto a substitution of the lower arm. So I can just hit Alt Shift D here and then I'll create another drawing. And I paste in my node there. And once you have your upper arm has a circle and your lower arm has a circle like this, then you can chop out your ends like that and you won't have to recreate your circle every time. And then I'm going to duplicate my upper arm as well. So this also has a two. And I'm going to take off this circle that we've added on the bottom, just like that. So now our lower arm passes behind and it has the circle or we can reset this shift R we will reset the animation. Now it's back in front and we'll just change these substitutions back to our one and then everything's lined up the way we want for the front arm. This is my favorite method. I just call it the nub method. It doesn't require any extra modules, just a couple drawing substitutions. It's very light if you are working on computers that are not the top of the line. You get a lot of bang for your buck for not very much work. It's also very easy to adjust if you need to taper this arm here. And so it's the cheapest, fastest solution I've found for getting these, these circular elbows working neatly. So now we've got our little arm. It bends from the top, bends from the elbow, bends from the wrist, and we can move all our pieces independently that we might need. If we have to do something that's a little bit where we have something like this, a little bit foreshortened, then we can get that very easily with this cheap arm and it's not getting any weirdness. This joint is still working very tidily. So that's our super basic arm 
for today. Hopefully that all made sense and please leave a question or comment down below if something is unclear. The next episode we're going to go over different ways of patching this elbow because this is my favorite method but it's by no means the right method and it's by no means the only method, okay? This is just the beginning of our elbow situation. <laughs> like and share and all those things internet people ask you to do. If you know anybody who could stand to learn a little bit more about Harmony, please share. Thanks for dropping by and I'll see you in the next video with more arms all about arms so many arms